Hey guys, it's Rod with Civil Advantage Firearms Training here. Today we're going to talk about uh, whether you can legally be in possession of body armor or what the law considers, uh, uh, defines as body armor uh, in Canada. So good news and bad news. The bad news is, is that the regulations vary from province to province and they vary widely with some provinces absolutely prohibiting the possession of body armor for civilians and other provinces having no restrictions whatsoever. Um, so that ambiguity is the bad news. The good news is, if you're in a province that allows you to have armor, you can have it, right? That's sort of the good news. Now, I'm not going to do the research for every province for you guys. I want to show you how to find this information. And while I'm doing that, I can tell you about British Columbia, which, which is where I live. So, um, in British Columbia, you can be in possession of body armor as a civilian. All you need is a PAL. That is your body armor uh, permit. So in 2009, the uh, Body Armor Control Act was passed, which said that uh, no one can be in possession uh, of body armor if you're not law enforcement, or you don't, you, and or uh, you have to have a permit, basically. And so you got armored car guards and investigators and security guards and blah 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 blah. So uh, at the very bottom, if now what's really important is I always encourage you guys to read the law, read it yourself. Don't take my word for it. Don't take anybody's word for it. Read the law. And once you get into reading the law, it's fascinating, all the kinds of stuff that you're going to find in there, right? Really good information. So, uh, Body Armor Control Act for British Columbia. Google Body Armor Control Act BC. No problem. Easy to find. Read the act. In the act, under part one, section two, subsection three, and point C, you'll find that anyone um, doesn't need a permit if they are exempt under the regulations. So, this fi these five words in part C here, they basically make all of the rest of the act worthless if you're exempt under regulation. So this is a very common thing in the law. I'm not a lawyer, right? You guys know that. Um, but it's very common for them to have an exemption, just like uh, the RCMP has an order in council to change the, 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 the uh, class of firearms, classification to different firearms. It's this little catch-all. It's like the whole act means nothing. Uh, so in that case, it's bad. In this case, it turns out okay for uh, for the law-abiding citizen. It means you're exempt. So you got to find. Next thing you have to find is the regulations. So you look up Body Armor Regulations, British Columbia, and you read that all the way through. That one is not so long. I think it's two pages or something. It's quite short. Uh, all the links will be in the description box below here. So if you read that, you go to uh, Part Two, Section Two, I believe, uh, down here at the very end, Point D. Basically, people that are exempt from the regulation or exempt from having to have a permit are an individual who holds a valid license issued under the, uh, under the Firearms Act of Canada authorizing the individual to acquire or possess a firearm. What is that? That's your PAL. So I personally went through this process myself. I sent in my picture and my fee and my application, everything, my justification. I have to justify why I need protective clothing uh, for whatever reason. I don't know. I guess that's just the world we live in, right? got to justify uh, why you want to not get shot with stuff. So hopefully my justification was satisfactory. Uh, so anyway, I sent in all the stuff. They sent it back to me. They said, you know, actually they called me is what it was. They sent all my stuff back in an envelope. And then someone was kind enough to call me and say, I don't know why you're sending this stuff in. You have a PAL. I said, oh, does that work? <laughs> they said, yeah. Yeah, go read the regulation one more time. So I read it. And then I had it verified with uh, some uh, uh, people I know in law enforcement. And they said, yeah, you're right. If you have a PAL, you can possess any kind of body armor. There's no restriction either, as far as I'm aware. So that's how it works. Once again, I would highly encourage you to read the law. It's really important that you know that yourself because you're going to have to explain it to somebody. Quick uh, little tidbit while I'm on the subject. When this was only, uh, I think, two years ago, I had a conversation with someone that works in a uh, federal police force that operates in Canada. Again, I'm not going to mention which one, uh, but uh, and they were completely unaware that uh, a PAL holder could be in lawful possession of, of body armor without a permit. In fact, uh, one of the other uh, law enforcement uh, officers that I spoke to said that they were instructed by their staff sergeant to seize uh, body armor from anyone that didn't have an actual body armor permit and arrest them, which is really bad because whenever, even if you're not charged with anything, even if it's a wrongful arrest, you still will have an arrest on your record. So if you try to travel to the U.S. or you 
apply for any kind of security stuff, it'll show that you had an arrest. It's almost like a record without actually getting a record. So that's why that's really bad, right? So I went out of my way to make sure that everybody, all these guys that I was talking to knew. I, it was left up to me, can you imagine? You know. Um, nonetheless, I don't wanna complain the whole time, but uh, it's good that you know the act. It's uh, good that you have this information if you're gonna be in possession of a body armor. Uh, check it out for your individual province. The other thing that can be a challenge is finding a vendor that will sell you body armor. Because what's going on as well <laughs> in, the, in the periphery at the same time is that a lot of these vendors have been persuaded, let's say, or, or uh, dissuaded from selling body armor to anyone that's a civilian, even if they have a PAL and or a permit, if they're a civilian. I guess it's their way of limiting their liability because they've been either harassed by law enforcement or what? I have no idea, right? So I'm not saying they were harassed. I just, I have no idea. But they're like, nope, we're not going down that road. And I don't know what road that is, but the road of doing legal business. But uh, anyway, if uh, last thing I'm going to say on the subject is if you are in possession of body armor and you do not have a PAL, consider getting a PAL immediately or turning over that body armor to someone that does have a PAL if that's how your regulations work in your province because the penalty is something crazy. I'll put it in the, in the description box, but I mean, it's like $10,000 and a year in jail or six months in jail or something, something crazy ridiculous for even having protective clothing right um, once again as I've said in other videos even if the law is ineffective prejudicial just plain a bad idea that makes no sense whatsoever to anybody it doesn't mean that it doesn't apply to you so make sure that you comply with the law and if we don't like the law start writing letters start reaching out to your MP and saying listen man I, I can't hurt anyone with my body armor. I'm just a regular guy. There's no reason why I should be restricted from having it. And which makes all the sense in the world because a couple of gangsters bought body armor and threw it on doesn't mean that everybody now has to be punished uh, for the actions of a couple of people, right? But that's, that's very common in the firearms community, uh, you know, in the, in the government uh, uh, bureaucracy to, to mass punish people for the actions of a few. But anyway, anyway, hopefully it helps. If you want to follow us on Twitter, you can at CivilAdvantage1, or of course you can find us on the web at www.civiladvantage.com. Thanks and we'll see you next time.